of the business taken care of. Without further ado, uh, let's all welcome our first speaker, Jan Kaiser. And let's get that presentation up on the board. Jan, are you good with this mic? Uh, no, is that one better? <laughs> <laughs> test, 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 test. All right, this test. nice work. Great. OK, well, he's, uh, Mahmoud, thanks to you for introducing me. Uh, obviously, you seem to be very confident in my talk. Uh, I'm not so sure about it because I've never seen it before because it's the first time I'm giving it. Uh, so confidence. Uh, who here feels unconfident when they deal with Unicode and other text encoding things in Python? Uh, don't be shy. Raise your hands. <laughs> right, well, probably me neither. Um, but there's some tips to get you started, to get you uh, going and build some confidence. So what I find is that it's easier to figure out what you're doing when you understand what the terms that everyone's talking about are. So let's start with terminology, I thought. Um, Unicode, what's that? Uh, Unicode is basically a bunch of uh, character points. So there's a bunch of listings that say um, this character is a Latin uh, character A, uh, so just a big A, uh, nothing complicated. Uh, it could be a letter with an accent. It could be uh, a Chinese uh, ideograph. I don't know how to say it correctly. Uh, or it could be an emoji, like a snake. So it looks a bit like this. Uh, so Unicode does this, and it maps them all to a unique identifier, just a, a number. Uh, I mean. They write it in a fancy format in hexadecimal, but it's just a number, right? So Unicode maps a number to a, to a sort of letter or something you can display, and it generally gives you a general idea of what the letter is going to look like, and a bunch of extra fields, like, for instance, the Chinese character there stands for eight. It actually gives you the numerical value for it. So you could, I don't know, multiply the numbers together just by consulting the Unicode table. Um, but this isn't enough, right? Uh, we want to transfer these characters to other people, and Unicode doesn't really, by itself, say, this is how you transmit these characters. This is just a description of all these characters. So there's this uh, representation that I found of the internet, right? Uh, <laughs> strings of ones and zeros, okay. Maybe string theory could be placed in there, I don't know, someone can make a joke about that. Um, but for the, to do this, you need a codec. Uh, so this is the part of code that's going to ensure that you can translate the Unicode code points, the Unicode characters, to something you can transmit. So codec is shorthand for coder, decoder. That's an encoder and a decoder. Now, I'm going to start explaining what a decoder is first because it's easier than explaining what encoding is. Um, let's say that you have some data that is coded of a specific form. Uh, you want to make it readable in a form that you understand uh, currently. So imagine uh, encountering some uh, web page online, uh, you encounter some special, some language that you don't know of, you put it through, say, Google Translate, and you get something you can understand yourself. This is sort of a very high level decoding process of something that was coded and something you don't understand, and now you understand it. Now, we're working at a much lower level, so it's going to be more on the level of file formats or uh, character code points. So we're taking some data in a certain code form, and we're transforming it to uh, Unicode data, so to the characters we've seen above. Uh, encoder, it does the reverse operation. So you have some Unicode data, and you can uh, use the codec to get it back into this form that you can share to other people, or over the internet, etc. Oh no, the mouse. <laughs> um, so the reverse operation. Uh, for instance, these are some codecs um, that Python comes with. Um, they all uh, have a scope. Uh, so let's say that ASCII, for instance, encodes uh, basically all the letters in the English alphabet, uh, plus some punctuation. So it's enough to cover just uh, English, American English language. Uh, then you have some more. Uh, I mean, there's literally hundreds of the things, right? Uh, so this is just a few examples. Uh, Latin one, for instance, it focuses on uh, the languages spoken in Western Europe. So I'm French, for instance. It encodes French accents, etc. And then there's UTF-8 and UTF-16, which are specifically designed to handle all of the Unicode character points. 
So for instance, uh, this is what UTF-8 looks like. Um, what one thing we can note is that it's, it's different depending on uh, the, the length of how many bytes is going to encode it to is different depending on how many uh, on, on the character they have. For instance, the letter A is encoded on one byte. The character uh, E with accent is coded on two bytes. Uh, eight in Chinese is coded on three bytes. And we have the snake that's coded on four bytes. So we have many different encodings. Uh, for instance, uh, ASCII and Latin one, uh, they both encode on always on one byte. Uh, so you're going to encounter different things. Um, some other encodings encode on two bytes all the time. And we have UTF-8, which for uh, concerns of keeping it um, compressed enough when you're dealing with English languages, it makes them uh, compact unless you need more information to deal with uh, more exotic characters from the point of view of the people who designed it. Um, to recap, uh, all the character sets are belong to Unicode. That's the goal of the project. They're trying to map everything in the world that's spoken <laughs> and not really spoken. Like, I don't know, does Esperanto have any extra characters? Huh? Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, therefore it's included in Unicode, right? Uh, the internet, etc., does not understand Unicode, so you're gonna have uh, to use a codec to understand that. Uh, so, you, the action of exporting it to someone else is the action of encoding the data, and the action of importing the data from someone else is decoding that data. And we have UTF-8 and UTF-16, and they handle all of the Unicode code points. So right now you've got everything you need to be pedantic whenever anyone says anything wrong about Unicode. This is what we all came here for, right? <laughs> no? Oh, okay. Uh, we're gonna have to deal with Python then. Okay, great. Uh, what Python has, uh, it has two types to represent the different things between coded and not coded. So bytes is the thing that's coded that's that you're gonna to transmit over the network and Unicode is the thing you're gonna um, have some text in that you can understand yourself, the intelligible data, as I put it earlier. Um, they're not called like this in both versions of Python, uh, so I've taken both extremes and put them on this slide. So there's a shared name um, that came, uh, that comes with one of these types, and it's the stir type. Uh, on Python 2, it's this uh, exported type that you use, the lower level type that you encode data to, and on Python 3 is the other one. This is extremely confusing. Uh, this is, I mean, yeah, depending on which version of Python you are, and if you try to run on both versions of Python, you're gonna have to account for this all the time. And it's not easy to manage. Uh, you have to, yeah, uh, you're gonna have to deal with this, unfortunately. But some tools make it a bit easier for you, uh, like 6, etc. Uh, the operations that Python gives you to convert between these types are the decode and encode methods of uh, the, res the respective types. So uh, when you get some uh, bytes, so either on Python 2 the stir type or on Python 3 the bytes type, you can decode it to get some Unicode data, uh, supplying a codec uh, as an argument. And when you have some text uh, that you have in Unicode uh, form in Unicode type on Python 2, or or in string type on Python 3, then you can encode it into an exportable format depending on the codec that you choose. Uh, there's some libraries that handle Unicode for you. So JSON, for instance, uh, in the JSON standard, it actually specifies as always UTF-8. So whenever you get, oh, it doesn't. JSON works in the color of Unicode. Right. It actually, it, it yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, That's right, that's right. Uh, at the, once you've decoded your JSON, it's always gonna be Unicode. And it takes care of uh, encoding it down the line for you. Is that correct? No, oh, okay. JSON.dump gives you a Unicode object. Mm. You will contain the bytes yourself. Oh, uh, oh, it w oh, okay, we'll give you that, well, okay. Uh, you can give JSON some options to make it easier for you to convert to other uh, form to other codecs. Uh, yeah, requests, uh, the HTTP parsing library, it uh, converts uh, uh, to and from different codecs depending on what the remote server accepts automatically for you. And io.open lets you specify what encoding 
uh, you would like to encode a file that you open with. So instead of using uh, just the open built-in, when you open files for reading, writing, you can use io.open and supply an encoding, and it will take care of that for you. To a lesser extent, there's sys.standard in and standard out, but it's not very reliable uh, when you always want to um, encode data. Uh, to recap, in Python, what we have? Uh, we have two types, one for bytes, one for text. In Python 2, uh, this is respectively string for bytes, Unicode for text, and in Python 3, this is bytes for, uh, for bytes, and uh, str for Unicode. Uh, you can use decode and encode methods to transfer between these two types, and some libraries will do the conversions for you. So let's get to what we're all about. Uh, I found some weird Unicode issue. What, what's going on? What should I do? Why is it doing that? Um, so, <laughs> so this code example is on Python 3. Uh, so I've tried to write a Unicode string and I've tried to decode that. Can anyone tell me what's wrong with this? Not you. Uh, if I heard you correctly, yeah. It's already uh, decoded, so you're trying to decode something that's already decoded, so Python 3 rightfully throws an error at you. You can't decode what's already been encoded. Okay, great. What about if you go to Python 2? Oh, okay. So now we got, uh, we tried to do the same thing on Python 2, and it gives us an error that the ASCII codec can't encode the character, whatever that they found. We've asked for a decode operation, is throwing an encode error at us for a completely different codec. What's going on? So Python 2 tries to be helpful with you, and whenever you use encode or decode wrong, it tries to make things right for you. And it doesn't really succeed at all. <laughs> so how it does this is it takes the default uh, encoding uh, for the system, and it tries to do the reverse operation that you're doing, and then do the operation that you wanted to do. So on Python 2, usually the default codec, unless you've been messing with your Python installation, is going to be ASCII. So it tries to encode it as ASCII, which it can't because there's an accident character there, and it tries to decode that. Of course, it fails immediately when it tries to encode ASCII, so it throws this error at you. We'll get to how we can fix this in a bit. Um, so you're doing this double uh, sort of uh, encode operation. Uh, I tried to do a parallel there. I must have not have been very awake when I picked that GIF. So it's this GIF where Neo encounters their first glitch in the matrix. Uh, they see something repeated twice as they're moving through a building, and they become very scared for reasons after that. Anyway, um, and yeah, unfortunately in Python 2, it was so helpful that usually you will not notice it during this behind the scenes. So if you've got some data, some English data you used to work with, and you try to do this mistake that we've done previously, it will encode this as ASCII, which succeeds because it's just English characters, and decode it as UTF-8, and all will be well, and you don't have an error, and oops, you've made a bug. As soon as someone puts an accent there, it's gonna break. So little takeaway here, maybe design first on Python 3, therefore it will just throw an error at you straight away. <laughs> That's helpful, but yeah, you have to make sure that you're using the same types between them, because when you don't put the U that I have here, uh, it will be a Unicode string in Python 3, therefore decode will crash, but on Python 2 it will work fine because the U, uh, the U wouldn't be there, so it would be a by string, therefore it would be normal to decode it, to try to decode it. Uh, there's also mixing Unicode and bytes, uh, so Python will also try to be helpful with you with that. It will also try to encode things as ASCII to try to make it fit. It doesn't work very well. Don't do it. Uh, so the solution that was proposed by Ned Batchelder, which I suggest if you have time to watch this talk, uh, is to always follow rigorously this method where when you get data that's not Unicode, you decode it immediately. Uh, and then all the way throughout your program, you're gonna deal uniquely with Unicode data, and then when you're done with this data and you're sending it off to someone else, you encode it again. So can that be compared in some sort of serialization? Uh, if you want, you can see it that way, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a different kind of concept. Serialization is I have some objects that I want to deal with, but 
is yeah is is on the same uh, sort of layers of abstraction that you could uh, picture. Um, another gotcha is uh, your keystrokes. Your terminal will show you uh, an access in character because that's how it's programmed to show you things. But Python might not read it that way. There's some probably some dark magic at work for Python to read this as weird as it is. Um, yeah, don't always trust what you see. Uh, you can always use uh, the wrapper functions uh, of Python to see what it's actually throwing at you. Uh, it's most obvious in Python 2 because you're, uh, al you're always switching between Unicode and uh, bytes uh, types. But it also happens in Python 3 uh, because that's just how terminals are. There's no other way than for the terminal when you press the access in the character to send encoded data and Python has to figure out what's it, what's it doing when it shows it to you. So when you're experimenting, be mindful that what you see may not be what you're doing. Uh, hmm? Uh, yeah, it will try to follow the system locale. Uh, if that's set correctly, everything is great. It, it tries to do the most correct thing, that's true, yes. Um, so Python 3 tries to display Unicode in your terminal. Uh, if it can't, uh, it will actually just show you the escape code. Uh, so I've deliberately fixed, uh, like messed up my encoding uh, in this example. Uh, if I try to print it, it tells me that it can't print it. It throws me an error. If I try to just wrapper it, it just, t it just tries to show me the escape code. Uh, but if um, if I give it some data that the encoder thinks it can encode, but it doesn't encode it correctly regarding my terminal, so my terminal understands UTF-8, but Python 4, oh, the terminal handles Latin 1, then it mismatches and it messes up uh, your display. Uh, recap, so Python 3 tries to auto-convert. Uh, this hides mistakes until it blows up in your face when you get the wrong kind of data, which is not the best kind of uh, mistakes to have. It's always uh, someone's doing a talk on uh, typing, I get the impression, sort of, more or less. So they'll probably tell you more of that. Um, the Unicode sandwich, follow these rules. Encode the data, I mean, decode the data as you get it, encode it as you leave it. Um, and in Python 2, don't make string types. Uh, again, uh, Python 2 comes up a lot. It's a lot easier to work with in Python 3 when it doesn't let you do this auto conversion uh, sort of uh, confusion. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I hope it gives you some basis to understand things better. Um, if you have more questions, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Test. All right. Thank you, John. All right. So, yeah, questions. I mean, this was a requested talk from back at Quora, so I know there's going to be one or two. I like the one about serialization, by the way. I sort of think about it that way, too. Yeah, you can view it as a pyramid the same way that you see the, um, uh, the layers of abstraction of the internet. So you have your serialization, your encoding, um, et cetera. Yeah, definitely. So questions about Unicode, troubles. If you have specific problems, uh, I'm going to throw myself out there. You can <laughs> maybe ask me later. <laughs> yeah, short of debugging your actual code live. Here you go, Cameron. <laughs> Yeah, so how have you dealt with um, unknown, like you get at some bytes and it's encoded unknown, and something you don't write. So you get some data, you don't know what it is. Yeah, can you tell So me there's some libraries is? that can tell you, that can try to tell you, try to guess what it is, uh, like marginally better than you or, or me can just looking at the data. Uh, this is just guesswork. Um, Card debt. Yes, chart debt, that's right. Uh, so you can feed it a little bit of your data and we'll try to give you uh, an encoding with a chance of being right. Um, the best case scenario is of course to know what kind of data you have. So yeah, I mean, it's nice to know you have a JSON object and not an XML object and not try to guess that at runtime. Uh, same thing for encodings. But when you have no other choice, yeah, chart debt has your back. And requests happens to use it, so whenever a web server is um, not very plentiful with information about what it's sending to you, you can uh, you can use that library. Yeah. So I guess why that is that in the case of HTTP, for instance, right? There's a side channel that's a header that's telling you what the content encoding is. 
So uh, there usually has to be that side channel. Um, if you just look at a file on a disk, the file system doesn't tell you, right? Uh, and frankly, file systems themselves are a hairy area because file systems, uh, like file names and so forth, uh, you know, aren't really, <laughs> they don't have a way to tell you what encoding they are. <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in the case of uh, web servers, since usually you're dealing with uh, HTML data, there's actually a meta type that you can put in the HTML that says uh, whatever encoding the document is, and this is all the more confusing on all the more reasons you should use requests. <laughs> right, how are, how, well, and how are you supposed to get to that, right? You got a chicken and egg problem <laughs> uh, when you're talking about Unicode sandwiches, uh, right? Anyways. Uh, it's not an egg salad sandwich joke. I know you like that, Marsha. All right, uh, but here, I have a question, actually. So uh, CLIs, right, which turns functions into CLIs, um, with that, uh, so since you're building CLI things, if somebody wants to build a command line tool that just takes bytes and outputs bytes, right, uh, like is just basically measuring throughput or something like this. There are a lot of, of things like that. Do you still recommend going through the Unicode sandwich? Uh, if you're not touching the data, I might as well not touch it at all, yeah. And so how do you do that in Python 3 where? Uh, so you just you open the file that you're reading in, uh, in binary mode. Uh, so either you're reading a file or you're reading the standard input, in which case you have to use this method called detach and it will remove the decoding process out of the thing and break half of the other things that rely on sys.standard input. Whoops. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Buffer can read and write directly in bytes. Uh, buffer, yeah. Use yeah, but how does that deal with uh, standard input? Oh, yeah, but if you're dealing with uh, standard input, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you will have to take the object and uh, either detach it or reopen it somehow. No. no. So it's just that standard, standard area dot buffer. Oh, dot buffer. OK. Uh, I was not aware. OK, so look up buffer or detach, uh, depending on how much stuff you want to read. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of CLI stuff myself, and that was sort of like a weird Python 3 thing where I had to switch so yeah, to using this buffer um, object. Just to summarize, uh, you can just take the data as binary. So with io.open uh, or open, you can just specify uh, the B sign. It will never try to decode the data. Um, same thing on the output when you write it. Cool. All right. Well, that's pretty great. Thank you very much, Jan. Give them a round of applause. All right.